So today we're going to talk about how animals learn and about communication. Part of what I'm going to talk about is how animals are trained, but don't think that at the end of my presentation you're going to be able to go home and train your own pet because training is actually a little bit more complicated than what I'm able to talk about today. But there's a couple of things I want you to think about. First of all, you want to think about how you're going to motivate your animal. And there's a couple of different ways to motivate. Motivate means that the animal is doing something because of what happens when they do it. So, for instance, let's say your mom says, okay, you need to go clean your room and I want it spotless within an hour. But you're too busy doing something else, like maybe you're playing video games. And you lose track of time and an hour later she comes back and she is furious and she's like, I told you to go clean your room, you didn't clean your room, now I'm really mad, no more video games for a week. Well, if you really love video games and you can't live without video games, the idea of going for a week without video games is horrifying to you. So the next time she says to clean your room, you're going to think back on the time that you lost video game privileges for a week and you're going to hurry up and clean your room. So that's one kind of motivation. Um, I guess we could call that punishment. Another type of motivation is when something good happens because you did as you were supposed to. So let's say your mom says, go clean your room, and you immediately get up and you clean your room and you do a really, really good job, and she walks into your room and she's just astounded. All your clothes are picked up and put away, the closet door is closed, all your toys are off the floor, your bed is made, you dusted, you vacuumed, everything looks fantastic. And she is so happy that you were responsible enough to clean your room that she says, come on, get in the car, we are going to go for some ice cream. Now, if you really love ice cream, and that's a special treat and you don't get it very often, the next time she says to clean your room, you're probably going to clean your room because you are going to hope that you're getting ice cream again. So the ice cream is a reward. That's another type of motivation. The other thing we need to think about if we're going to work with animals is patience. They don't speak our language, so if I wanted you to do something like point to a chair and say, go sit down, you would understand what I meant. If I want to tell my dog to do that, she would have no clue. So I have to think about ways that I can communicate with my dog that is going to get through to her and make her understand what I want. And then the other thing we need if we're going to train an animal is practice. So just like the way you get better at something like a language or a sport or playing a musical instrument is by practicing, that is the way that animals get better at things too. So if I want to teach my dog something as simple as sit, not only do I have to teach her what that word means, but I also have to practice in different situations. So she needs to know that sit means the same thing whether we're at home, whether I'm sitting on the floor or whether I'm standing, in all different types of situations. And then there's one more thing we need to do if we're going to teach an animal, and that is to think about how you can break it down into simpler steps so that the animal understands what you're talking about. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say I want to teach someone to read who's never learned how to read or even hasn't learned that their letters or anything. I'm not going to get a chapter book, and sit down with them and say, today we're going to learn how to read this book because that's going to be way too complicated. So. What's the first thing that anyone needs to know before they can learn to read? How about the alphabet? You need to know what the letters of the alphabet are. So that's one of the first things we learn when we're about three years old is the alphabet song. And then the next thing we need to know is our sounds. We need to know that sometimes C sounds like an S and sometimes C sounds like a CH sound if it's with an H. We need to know that different sounds, different letters combined with other letters can make different sounds. And then once we've got that down, we can start putting together some really simple words. So three letter words, one letter words, two letter words, and once we know a number of those one, two, and three letter words, we can put a couple of words together and that makes a sentence. And once we've got 
even more words, we can read many sentences, and eventually when we're old enough and we've had enough practice, we can start to read chapter books. So, of course, we're not going to teach our pets to read, but if I want to teach my dog to do something that maybe is a little complicated, I'm going to break them down into smaller sections. Once she understands each section, I'm going to put those sections together, and then eventually I'm going to have my finished behavior. So let me give you an example. When I was teaching my dog Whimsy to pick something up off the ground and hand it to me, I didn't start with something on the ground and try and get her to pick it up and hand it to me. First I wanted to teach her to actually put her mouth on something. And then I had to teach her to hold it in her mouth. And then I had to teach her to pick something up from a distance. And then I had to teach her to bring it to me and put it in my hand. So there were a lot of these little steps that we worked on before I had the final behavior. So now she's got a nice little trick where if I point to something and say bring it, she'll go pick it up and bring it to me. But that took a really long time to work on. And I had to be very, very patient because when we were first working on it, she really didn't understand what I was getting at. So we're going to actually play a game. So it's called the clicker training game. However, you don't need a clicker in order to play this game. Any kind of a sound will do, even if you just wanted to use the sound of the word yes. So this is how it works. Every time an animal hears a click or a yes or another sound that has that meaning to them, they learn that that sound means that they're going to get something they really like. So a lot of times when we're clicker training an animal, it's going to be food. So they're going to hear the sound of the click and then they're going to get a treat. Or they're going to hear the word yes, and then they're going to get a treat. And after they've made that association, you can start using it to train them to do something. So in Whimsy's case, when I was working on the picking up the item and bringing it to me trick, what I did was every time she touched a wooden spoon, the, the handle of a wooden spoon, she'd get a click and a treat. And eventually she started to learn that just by putting her mouth on this wooden spoon, she got a click and a treat. And then I started clicking and treating the ones where maybe her lips were open a little bit or where her mouth was open just a little bit. And then I started clicking when she had her mouth hovering over the, the, the wooden spoon. And then I waited until her mouth closed around the wooden spoon. So we worked our way up in all these little steps, but she learned that, that she did the correct thing when she heard the click and that the clicking sound meant that she was getting something she really liked. So with the clicker training game, we're going to have you guys do something, so human somethings, not animal somethings, so that you can see what it's like to be an animal who's being trained by a human. You can see what it's like to be trained without communication other than the sound of the clicker. And it's going to make you think a little bit about how our pets feel when we're trying to get them to do something and they truly don't understand what we, what we want from them. This is how the game works. And I'm going to pretend that I am both the person who's learning how to do something and the person who's training because I just want you to, to see what this is going to look like. I'm going to come into the room from that door and the target behavior is for me to touch the handle of that closet in the back corner back there. Um, now, if I was really being trained, I would have absolutely no idea what, what I was supposed to do. The only information that I would be getting is the communication from this, the clicker. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that the person who's being trained gets as much information as they can, because if they don't get enough information, they're going to get confused and they're not going to know what it is you want them to do. So the more I can click, the better it is for the person who's being trained and the less likely that they're going to get confused and frustrated. Because when we, when we get frustrated when we're learning something new, we end up just shutting down and not wanting to learn it. So that's not what we want from, from when we're teaching somebody. We really want them to get a lot of information, understand what we're trying to communicate, and feel very confident about what it is they're learning. So. When I come into the room, every time I take a step in the correct direction, I'm going to click. 
because if I'm the learner, I need to know I'm going in the right direction. Now, if I take a couple of steps without hearing a click, I'm not going to know if I'm correct or not until it's too late. So let's get started. I'll start here at the store, and I'm going to take my first step in. Here's a click. Now, at this point, I have a couple of different directions I could go in. I could go straight, I could turn to my right, I could turn to my left, or there's a couple of different angles I could try. If I am truly in the dark about what it is I'm supposed to do, I might try going this way. So if I turn in the wrong direction, I should not hear a click. And if I don't hear a click, I should know automatically that I'm going the wrong way. So if I take that step to the right, I don't hear a click, I'm going to go, hmm, I didn't get communication that this is the correct direction, so I must be going the wrong way. So at this point, I might try turning this way. I'm going to click again because even though it's not a direct line to the closet, turning from the right to the left is the right direction. So now I might try going straight. And I'm going to click every time I take a step because even though the closet door is to my left, this is still the, the right direction. This side of the room is correct and I need to for being on the correct side of the room. Now at some point, if you're training, you might want that person to actually turn to their left. So maybe they take a step forward and you're thinking, well, I don't really want that person to do, get too close to all the stuff that's stored against that side of the room because if they get too close to that table rack, they might think it has something to do with the table rack. So I probably don't want the person I'm training to get too close to other things that might get in the way. So I might stop right here. That person's going to take a step forward. They're not going to hear a click. And now they've got a couple of things they can do. They could try to turn to the right. I'm not going to click for that. They might turn this way. I wouldn't click for that. But if they turn and head in that direction, I'm going to click for that. something to do with the counter itself or maybe I'm supposed to open the, the cabinet doors and that's not what I want that person to do at all. So I'm going to stop right here. If they take another step, I'm not going to click. So again, the learner knows I took a step. I didn't hear a click. So I've got to go try a different direction. So you're, you're, the person you're training may not go in the correct direction at first. They might try turning in this way. If they do, you're not going to click. You're going to wait until they turn in this direction. Now, I'm not quite to that cabinet door. I'm close. I'm not where I really should be. So I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to not click if they turn in this direction. If they turn this way, I'm going to click. And you don't even need for them to take a step. So I'm going to go back to where I was before. So if they turn in this direction, I might click just for that turn. And then I'm going to wait and see if they do something else. Now, if they're here, people do a lot of things that you don't expect them to do. They might touch the door. I would actually click for, for touching the door because the handle is on the door. And so they're, they're close. They're not as close as I want them to be but they're close, so I'm going to click for that. If they move their hand this way, they're moving it away from the handle, so I'm not going to click for that. If they move their hand this way, I'm going to click that because it's moving close to the handle. If they touch the handle, I'm going to click. Now, my end goal could be opening the door. Sometimes what happens is people touch the handle, and then even though it's very obvious to all of us, they don't actually grasp it or turn it to open the door. So they might touch it and if they don't get further communication, they're going to give up and move on and do other things. So if they're touching the handle, you want to click that. If they do this, if they do anything else with the handle, I would click that. If they move their hand off the handle, 
I would not click that. So if your learner gets frustrated, because even though you know it's very obvious I want you to open the door, sometimes people shut down and they literally don't know what to do, even though to everybody else it's obvious, then you maybe want to take some pity on them and help them out. Because we don't want anyone to get frustrated. Our goal with any time we're teaching someone to do something, we want to make them feel very comfortable. We don't want them to get frustrated. We don't want them to forget about working. We want them to be happy. And that's the same thing with our pets. We don't want them to get frustrated. We don't want them to get upset. We want our, our animals to be happy. And sometimes they might need a break. Sometimes they might need additional information. Um, and we can always come back to it and start over. Okay, so Megan is going to come in in just a few minutes and I'm going to play the game with her. She doesn't know what it is I want her to do, but I'm going to have her pick up that bottle of, of um, hand sanitizer that's on the back cabinet. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. It's right underneath the clock. So that's our, our goal. Now keep in mind, Megan has played this game before, so this is gonna be a little bit easier for her than it would be for somebody who's never done it before. So the more we learn, the faster we learn. And this is a game that's very familiar to Megan. So let's bring her in and we'll start playing. Okay, go. That was really easy because like I said, Megan has done this before. <laughs> now, one thing to keep in mind is if she got stuck, I might tell her to go back to her starting point and we'd start all over again so that she could, she could familiarize herself with something she already knew. So she already knew that she's supposed to take like five or six steps forward before she turns to the left. So she, we would co be covering ground that was already familiar to her. So now we're going to get somebody in who's never played the game. And what we're going to do is have him open the same closet door that I um, kind of practiced with in our first round. And when you're ready, tell me. That's it. 